Hello, I'm Jennifer Witt, Director of ProjectManager.com. Well, welcome to our whiteboard session today on how to work smarter, not harder. I just recently celebrated another birthday and people asked me what I like the most about getting older. And I said, it's actually getting smarter. So I remember back in the day when I started my first corporate job after college and I noticed that I was always the one working late as everyone else kind of waved goodbye, you know, at five o'clock and I was still there till all wee hours of the night. And I thought, wow, how do they do that? They're so much smarter. And they kind of smiled and they always said, great job, Jennifer, you're working so hard. And so I was so proud of myself because I was working so hard and that got me even more projects and more responsibilities. And I thought that was great until I finally caught on. So if you're one of the ones who are working late while everyone else is going home, or you're getting all the harder projects and everyone else is getting all the cushy jobs, well, let me give you a few tips I've learned along the way. So first of all, assess and ask yourself, why is it important for you to work smarter? Because I decided there's actually our own triple constraint we're working with because you might want more time, you might want more money, like how can I do more with less and make more money at the same time? Or what about scope? How can I get more deliverables done? How can I get more done in my day? And maybe quality, quality of life. For me now as I'm getting older and smarter, I'm actually more interested in my quality of life, my life balance. So assess yourself and decide, again, what makes it smarter? What are you trying to accomplish? What are the results that you want? So once you do that and know why, then here are just a few things I wanna share in how, the how to work smarter. So number one, check your abilities. Check your abilities on what you're doing and ask yourself, am I the best person to do this? I know even in the realm of project management, there are some things that I like to do better than others. There's some things that I can do better than others. So I decide if I'm to do this or not. So I find, is this a team member who can do this better? Or do I have a colleague? Do I have someone else in the group or organization? And I reassign different tasks according to abilities. Number two, boundaries. Um, always looking at boundaries and making sure I set my own boundaries where people aren't able to come in and decide that uh, I need to reshuffle my schedule on their behalf because of some lack of planning they're doing. Or maybe people just come into my office or my cubicle or maybe they hijack my meeting. So I have to set my own boundaries and learn to say no and make sure people understand that. The next item is your calendar. Your calendar, your schedule, the days you work, the hours you work. I remember when I first started um, out of college, it was important for me to have to come in early. So I would get in early at 6 a.m. From so 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., I would plan all my activities. And then when my team came in, then I would be able to, to work with my team, meet with my stakeholders, any other project team members. And then at the end of the day, it was important for me to go do my exercise routine. So I had a certain time that I wanted to leave at the end of the day. Then now it's almost reversed. So now I start my morning out with my routine, my exercise routine, the things that I need to do for me to get quiet. Maybe I meditate or maybe I get my quiet time. So I don't even start my work day until 10 a.m. And then I end my day at two so I can do the planning for the next day. And then I come in and then everything's set. So you've gotta be able to set your own schedule and your own calendar. And then one of the things I see with some of my mentees is, um, and I used to do it myself, when people would call and wanna change meetings around. Well, you can do that, you know, things do change, but you've gotta be able to control your calendar and and understand how that impacts your day and your projects. So being able to manage that effectively. The next one is mentors and mentees. I'm constantly engaging new mentors for myself because I'm, I wanna find people who have been there, done that for the things I wanna do because I feel like I can learn from them. So I engage them and I ask them questions like, how am I doing? I have them assess 
me. They get to look at my work habits. What am I doing? How am I doing it? And they get to question and they get to see where maybe I have gaps where I can't see for myself. So they may offer different suggestions of things, maybe more abilities that I need to learn, more skill sets I need. They may see habits that I have with maybe not setting boundaries and not being able to own and manage my calendar. And then mentees. I think it's important to have mentees, people who are learning. Maybe they're trying to learn things that I know how to do, so they constantly ask questions. I'll never forget an environment I was in where we had people who had just been hired on. Some people were new out of college, some people were new out of other companies, but they were considered the new people. And so I remember there was one guy in particular who always had these great ideas, creative ways to save us time, maybe money, energy. And he was told that he was young. So the new people are, the new people were to be seen and not heard. And I thought that was so crazy. So later I would always pull him aside and I would talk with him myself and question him. And I always got new ways of doing that. So I've never forgotten that. So I always solicit and I always feel I have some, something to learn from my mentees, just like they have something to learn from me as their mentor. So I think it takes both mentors and mentees. And then number, the, the one for processes. It's always great to have processes or systems established, documented, repeatable, measurable processes. Um, for those who may work in different fields where there's the Carnegie Mellon Capability Maturity Model, there may be ISO, there may be other standards, but those are the components that they look for. Being able to document things so people who um, maybe you can hand work off to, so it's a documented proce procedure, it's, um, and it's also measurable. So you, you can't improve anything if you can't measure it. So those measurements help you to improve. And then question, always question, is this something I even need to be doing anymore? Is this the way I need to be doing it? Because as things change, um, we always need to be able to update how we're doing things. A good example is um, I have a, um, someone in my group who is still using Excel. And so we started looking at it. And back in the day, Excel was a way to make things better. It was a, an improvement over doing things manually so to put something in Excel was a step up. It, it actually improved and saved time. But now we've learned that because they're online systems, online project management systems, we can actually put that in a project management software and they can do the calculations without doing Excel. So Excel is now an old way of doing things where the new project management system is the new way of doing it. So it's always question. So these are some of the ways that I found over time as I'm getting older and now smarter. And those are some of the things I just wanted to share and I hope they help you too. If you're looking for a tool that can help you work smarter, not harder, then sign up for our software now at projectmanager.com.